Okay, let's start. Uh, welcome to the DDPS seminar today. Before we introduce today's speaker, let's go over some uh, rules and logistics. <clears throat> First of all, please mute yourself during the talk unless you have questions <clears throat> so that our speaker can talk without unnecessary interruptions. If you have clarification questions, you are welcome to unmute yourself and ask those questions. Otherwise, please use chat room to post your questions so that we can address them in Q&A session at the end. Second, no classified discussion is allowed here, so watch out. Finally, the talk today will be recorded and uploaded in our YouTube channel. <clears throat> okay, that's about it. Now, let me introduce our speaker today. Um, it is an honor to host <coughs> Today's speaker, excuse me, Dr. Goyal, uh, who is from Max Planck Institute. He graduated from the Department of Engineering uh, Design at Indian Institute of Technology in 2003, uh, 2013. <coughs> he then joined the Department of Professor Peter Banner at the Max Planck uh, Institute for Dynamics of Complex Technical Systems in Germany for his PhD in 2018. He received his PhD in mathematics at the Otto von Gurich University of Magdeburg in Germany. Again, he has been a postdoc for the period of 2018 to 2020 at the MPI DCTS Magdeburg, Germany again. Since 2021, he is the team leader of physics enhanced machine learning in the CSC, CSC department <clears throat> at the same institute. Dr. Goyal's main research interests are scientific machine learning, model order reduction, physics enhanced learning of dynamical systems and image reconstruction. Today, Dr. Goyo will uh, present Physics Informed Learning for Nonlinear Dynamical Systems, a deep learning approach to operator inference, <clears throat> which is aligned with our core interest here. So we, ex we expect a great talk today. And now, without further ado, let me pass the baton to Dr. Goyo. <clears throat> Dr. Goyo, it's all yours. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much for the kind introductions. And it is my pleasure to be to be here and present some of our work, which we have been doing very recently in our department. And uh, so I am also happy to present our our recent work in this seminar, and looking forward for some fruitful discussions later on as well. So today I will be presenting some work on the physics informed learning for nonlinear dynamical systems, and basically in this work we are focused on operator inference approach to learn dynamical systems. Before I go further, so I would like to first thank all my collaborators with whom I have worked and uh, and to present some of the joint work and which includes Peter Banner, Karen Wilcox, Benjamin Festhofer, Boris Kramer, Igor Pontes, Jan Hyland, and Bullet Karason and Suleiman. Yeah, it is. And so the main focus here, what we are looking into modeling dynamical models for processes and why we, we need dynamical models is to analyze transient behavior uh, under the operating different different operating conditions. And for example, if you want to design a control for a chemical plant, uh, uh, for example, you want to avoid some disaster in a plant and you want to function your plant according to your desires and you want to implement a control strategies. Or if there's a parameters, you want to optimize the parameters and want to predict long time horizons for dynamics. And for this all purpose, we need dynamical models so that we can carry out our engineering design studies. So let's look at the, what are the main things. So, you are giving a physical systems and the physical system might come from the, for example, mechanical systems or for the networking or electrical circuits and et cetera, et cetera. And these are the physical models which has been studied for more than a decades. And 
these are very well studies. One of the thing is if you if you have a process which is very well understood, there are probably partial differential equations which are very well known. For example, in incompressible flow, there is a Neves stocks and which can describe the flow of in flow in a, in a given domain. Moreover, on the other side, which you can see is that a physical system might carry some expertise and some knowledge which can come from our experts or experimentals. And these are probably, there is no laws which we understood, but from the experience by expertise, there is a model which we can write, which will describe the physical um, or physics of a particular process. And then we will end up in the differential algebraic equations and the other side, which we can also end up in the differential algebraic equation if you discretize a partial differential equation. And once we have this algebraic differential equation, then you can use that model into simulation control and optimization or uncertainty quantification, etc. Whatever your desire is. But however, there are two main bottleneck in the whole process, which I want to highlight here. And this two, two major concern point is the discretization step. So how you really would discretize such that uh, the, all the dynamics are captured in, in your model. And the second thing is the high fidelity of the models and which can also cause some concern to us. So let's dive into these two concerns a little bit more detail. So the first challenge is again the discretization for complex process, the discretized model, which describes all the underlying dynamics and features is a challenging task. So if a given domain and if the, comp and the process is a very complex, then you want to discretize in a such a way that all the dynamics is very well captured and, and all the features of the process. And this, this becomes even more challenging and demanding if, if your geometry is more complex, involves multi-physics as well, and there is a coupling between the different components, for instance. And then this all the process becomes even more cumbersome. And the last thing which I would like to highlight is, is the case where you do not even have a access to a discretized model. So for example, consider the case where you are giving a legacy code to, to simulate a particular problem or that is very dedicated simulated toolbox, for instance. And if you really want to get a discretized model, then you have to really understand what is the code is doing and how these matrices are assembled and which may not be an easy task for, for an end user, for instance. And this code generally always has on the regular times updates and you have to again see what has been changed in the code so that you can get the again discretized model. And this process also can be very cumbersome. And second point which I, I would like to highlight is the high fidelity of models. And if you if your dynamics is very complex, then and to resolve the, all the dynamics, the underlying dynamics, you need to have a lot of degrees of freedom, which will uh, describe the dynamics and which is also called like state space dimension, which can easily go up to 10 to the power four or 10 to the power six. And if you have a such high fidelity models, then simulations or repeated simulation and control and optimization becomes very infeasible. So these are the two, two challenge which we have in front of us and we would like to resolve this uh, to come around with these two issues. So, Again, I would like to like sketch out. So, so in the end, what we want to have is if you want to get in a model, for example, which uh, describe the dynamics of a process. So we typically go through these four steps. So first you are giving a partial differential equation with a boundary condition, which you want to have it. And then the first step that we do is a model. And what we do is again, discretize the model and which will lead to high fidelity models. And we, if you want to do control and simulation with this high fidelity model and to, to ease this task, we want to get a reduce for the models. So these are the typically uh, as a flow of the work which we typically follow. So as I said, it, these are the two steps, which is one is discretization and this high fidelity models. Can we go uh, out of these two steps? So. What we want to do is that we are giving a partial differential equation and we are we want to get directly reduced for the models, but this, this process is leveraged by the fact to collect the data. And 
we are giving a data set which simulates or which are obtained by the simulation of a partial differential equation, but we do not have access to a discretized model. And we, or this is the process which you want to avoid, for instance. So as I said, it, the data can be obtained, for example, from a commercial software or legacy code. And this, these steps or this software does not allow us to dig into discretization or how they, these things are discretized, or we do not want to do these things because it's a cumbersome task to get a discretized model directly or out of from the out from the software or from a code. And so, and our goal is to get a same reduced order model, which you would, if you would follow this path, partial differential equation and discretize and high fidelity model and then reduce order models. And this reduced order model, model can be get directly from the data. So if you're giving a data which simulates the partial differential equation and you can get directly the same reduced order models which will get from this path. And one of the advantages of this, this approach would be that the all the analysis which we have obtained, for example, error bounds and the convergence analysis for this path can be directly applied to this path. But now we can skip these two steps, which are kind of a discretization and the high fidelity uh, to obtain the high fidelity models. So a little bit dive into the approach which we typically do to get a reduce order models. So you are giving a high fidelity model, which is x dot is equals to ax, and f of x is a nonlinear term. And we want to get a reduce order models which are in the low dimensional. And typically workflow which we have is that this high fidelity model is projected on the low dimensional using the project sense matrix V. And to obtain the V matrix and the common approach is a proper orthogonal decomposition, which actually looks, takes the snapshot of the X at the survey time instance and apply singular value decomposition to get dominant modes. And this will give you the, a very good approximation of the high fidelity state into low dimensional. And then once we have this project and matrix, we, we can apply reduce order models or we can obtain reduce order model by projecting the high fidelity model in into low dimensional using this projects and matrix. And as we can see it, if you want to get this reduce order models, we need the matrix A, which is a discretized um, model or disc which can be obtained from the discretization of partial differential equation and this f of x also we need it. And as, as we said it, we want to avoid um, computation of this the full matrix A and f of x as well. So this rise to the one of the frameworks which we are interested in and this is operator inference framework and the operator inference framework allows us to construct reduce order models directly from the data. This was the approach initially proposed by Benjamin Festhofer and Wilcox in 2016. And the operator inference actually is an approach which makes use of non-physical structure at the PDE level. We do not uh, look into the discretized version, but only look at the partial differential equation level, the how the structure will look like. And for simplicity, here, I assume this partial differential equation are in the quadratic form, and which actually, if you were to discretize this partial differential equation, which are in the quadratic form, you will get this kind of form. And then, if you want to construct a reduce order models, then what we typically do is collect again the snapshot of the high fidelity state vectors in the, at the different time instant and determine the projection matrix using the dominant POD basis and construct the reduced state by projecting mm, the high dimensional state into low dimension using the V. And then also, once you project the, the high, fidelity, high fidelity state into low dimensional, and then we also compute the time derivative of this small dimension here. So these are the all the steps to in the preparation of the data set. Here, as you see, here is we only make use of the data of the state, but we do not touch this high fidelity model or discretized model. Then we compute the reduced order models of the quadratic form by solving a directly an optimization problem. So let's assume that you you want to achieve or uh, reduce order models which are in the quadratic form. Then we can uh, 
solve for this operator a hat and h hat directly by solving an optimization problem. So then we will get a reduced order models directly uh, using the data set, and we do not require the any any point of time the full order models or high fidelity model in the discretized space. We just need a simulated simulated data at the different time instance. And moreover, it can be also shown that the, this optimization problem and the reduced order models, which we'll get by solving this optimization problems, recovers this new intrusive POD models if the data is morphogenic. And as a result, what we have is all the analysis and the error estimates directly from the POD reduced order models. And typically, I would just wanted to highlight one point is that typically these kind of least square problems are ill conditions and hence we need to regularize these problems. And this has been studied in the, um, by the Mercury and also by us. And to how to regularize this so that we get a meaningful solution and, and we can elevate this problem of ill conditioning. So these are the one of the things uh, which assumes the very particular structure, which are in the quality form. Moreover, we have studied also in where we do not do not restrict ourselves to quality form, but we can also consider a general nonlinear systems, and where the nonlinear term is given by f of x. But the assumption which you make here is that we know the form of f of f t of s. So we do not know. Um, in the discretized form, but we only know at the partial differential equation level. And our goal is to learn reduced order models directly from the data without discretizing this nonlinear partial differential equation in this form, which, and then f of x, so the reduced f has a almost similar structure, which is in a partial differential equation. And this also in the similar framework by solving an optimization problem, we can directly obtain the reduced order models using the data in this form without requiring a discretized model as, as an intermediate step. And we also can use this hyper reduction to you know, further accelerate, accelerate reduced nonlinear systems. And this is actually you can apply hyper reduction to one of your favorite methods, for example, EIM or DIM or GNET, for instance. So here was so far for the operator inference, and uh, we have applied to various applications these things. And one of the applications which I present here is a tabular, tabular reactor model. This is a, a single reactions, which is a coupled equations, and this is phi and the and the theta, which denotes the concentration and temperature. And we are interested in the output quantity. And what we only know is partial differential equation. We and we do not want to have a discretized model and directly uh, get a reduced order models directly from the data set. So we, what we do is we collect the snapshots of phi and theta in the time interval 0 to 30 and look at the decay of, uh, uh, decay of the single values of the training data set. And we observe a very steep or rapid decay of single values, which uh, allows us to construct a reduced order models of the very low dimensions. Here we we consider uh, we try to learn a reduced order models only order ten, and we we compared with the if you were giving a reduced if you were giving a discretized model and project in the classical POD setting, and what we observe is that you can also learn reduced order models almost as good as POD model without requiring requiring a discretized model in the intermediate step. And here also we see the trend only the model for 0 to 30, and you predict from the 30 to 60, and the predictive capability of the both reduced order models are also very good. So it, it kind of tells us that we are not overfitting the system. And one more example which we have is coming from batch chromatography is a chemical process, which is a mixture of uh, two compounds, which A and B. And what we we the, our goal is to separate the the A and B from the mixture of these two products. So, and the process which follows um, a particular kind of 
the process is done generally done in the columns and this column has a very special property so what we do is we're feeding the mixture of a and b and this is passing through the uh, the columns and but in the columns the comp uh, the the product a for example will move faster than the, the product b and in the end of the channels you will actually collect the the separation of these two products and this is a kind of a separation um, process which is followed in a chemical process chemical processes to to separate the the products from a and b for instance so and the dynamics of this process is given by the best chromatography which is also again a coupled partial differential equation and uh, and is is coupled for instance and our here is also our goal is to to preserve this coupling structure in the reduce order model so so that we don't mix these two uh, two quantities with c and q which um, kind of denotes the concentration of the compounds a and b in a particular form so here if you want to really um, preserve this coupling structure what we can do is we can apply a block diagram projection so that we do not mix the quantities and so that the reduced space of the all the quantities are uh, reduced independently without mixing them so here again we, up, we compare with the intrusive pod and and we also learn reduce order model directly from the data and we see the we observe that both reduce order models performs very good but on the one hand we in the if you want to apply intrusive pod models then you need to have a discretized model but wherever if you want to learn a reduce order model directly from operator inference then we do not require this intermediate steps there and we can directly compute reduce order model directly from the data also we can also extend this uh, this operator inference approach for a parametric case and we have also if you have a parametric partial differential equation then you can directly learn uh, reduce order models which also have the same parameter dependencies and so here we take example of the shallow water equations which is also parameterized by the theta which actually uh, indicates the angle corresponding to latitude and he, this is again a coupled partial differential equation where you have the u and v which are velocity and h is a high field and we want to construct a reduce order models for the shallow water equations without having access to a discretized version of this shallow water equations so for this one what we do is we collect the training data set for the five different parameter settings in the range of pi by six to pi by three and we infer a reduce, reduce order models directly from the data of order 75 for instance and we compare the for example the height field for the parameter pi 5 pi by 24 which is not in our training sets which is on the testing set and we see this the comparison of the full order models and the uh, reduce order models for these parameters and in the eyeball norm they look very similar to each other so here the advantage here is the reduce order models directly constructed from the data without having a discretized version in as an intermediate step. Okay, so this was I presented so far is the reduce order models, how to construct reduce order models uh, using the operator inference. And uh, the, so far we have not considered a particular find type of structure or the the partial differential equation which might have a constraint. So let's look into how this framework can be tailored to constraint non-linear non dynamical systems. So, so far as I said, it, we have considered a operator inference for a non-linear system which are not subject to constraint, but many processes may have algebraic constraints involved. And one of the applications which we are looking into is incompressible flows or and the dynamics of incompressible flow can be given by the incompressible Navier-Stokes equation, where the algebraic constraints are kind of a divergence of the velocity field. And this is actually the constraint. And so far, we have not actually have done or have treated this algebraic constraint very particularly. So let's look into a little bit more in details how we can make use of this algebraic constraints in learning um our reduce order models directly from the data so just to highlight a few points so this 
this incompressible navier stokes equation which are coupled coupled equations in the velocity fields and the pressures and again the one of the thing is there's a constraints which are kind of the divergence of in the divergence of the velocity field so if you were to discretize a navier stokes equation for incompressible flows you will have this kind of discretized form so you have and differential equation in the velocity, and then there's a constraint here. And these are again the coupled. So you have you have the velocity field and the pressure, which are actually coupled. They said it here. And there are some properties of uh, if you if you get a discretized navier stokes So one is like a, this E11 will be a positive definite matrix, and this also this matrix will be non-singular. And which actually tells us that if you do not have this nonlinear terms, then this linear part of this navier stokes is actually index two system. So, and in the rest of the talk, I will consider actually in this G of T, which is sitting here, is actually zero. But if you do not have zero, then also you can treat um, by some modification, which we have discussed in our paper. But for the simplicity in our talk, I will assume that G of T here is zero so if you are given if you are given a discretized model and if you want to compute a reduced order models for incompressible you know, or discretized version of incompressible navy stocks and if you construct a reduced order model directly from the pod proper orthogonal decomposition so what as a first step what we do is determine dominant pod basis for velocity and pressure which are denoted by this vp and and vv and construct a reduced order models using the block collecting projections. And you will construct, uh, you will, um, if you, if you, if you put this v, VV and VP in the block form and use the collecting projection, you can directly get a reduced order models. However, if you not these things that the reduced order model which you will get in the classical setting will be independent of pressure, and therefore. And the one of the reason why it will be independent of pressure is this VP. I think this would be the transpose here, but VP times A A12 will be actually zero. And that therefore the reduced order models will be independent of pressure. And if you really are interested in the pressure field in the classical POD setting, you cannot get it. So these are the some of the observations. And if you make analogy with how you really do with the uh, if you construct a reduced order model using POD. However, I just wanted to mention that they are, of course, a setting or the uh, they are treatment to get a pressure fills in the modified POD settings. But in the classical setting, it is not um, not possible to get a, for example, pressure field. So here, our goal is to construct a reduced order models directly from the data sets. So you are giving velocity and the pressure fills for the different time instance. And, and we want to do these things with going to a discretization. So for example, if you're giving a, 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 a legacy code to which simulates a flow and we want to, for incompressible flow and we want to get reduced order models directly from the data set. So the first observation which you make is that, that this, they although um, discretize never stock are coupled and but using by making use of projector we can uh, decouple these equations so to do these things so look at this constraint equations and if you take the derivative of it we will again get this constraint or this equality here and if you substitute v dot from this equation then we can directly get the pressure field or pressure here which is given in terms of velocity only and not that here the velocity and the connection between the velocity and pressure is algebraic. There's not even a dynamic. So if you're giving a velocity field, you can directly get a pressure field. And if you substitute this pressure again in this differential equation, then you can get an, an evolution equation for the velocity, which is actually independent of pressure, and which is actually this one here. So you, you do this analysis, if you were giving a discretized model, but the lesson which we learn here is that the velocity field can evolve independent of pressure field, and the pressure is an pressure can be given in the algebraic equation uh, in terms of velocity field itself. So these are two main observations which we can make 
from our analysis if you were giving a discretized model and we use this this knowledge in learning uh, reduce sort of model directly from the data set so for this one what we do is let's prepare our um, data set so you take the snapshot or the training data set for the velocity and pressure and the u for example can be a control input and again for like in the classical operator inference we determine the POD basis for the velocity and pressure, which actually will be project the high fidelity vector of velocity and pressure in the low dimension. And we also approximate the derivative of the reduced velocity. And once we have this data set, we, we can learn a non-intrusive way reduced order models for incompressible flow of this form. So as we, as we discussed, in the last slides that the velocity field can be given independent of pressure of pressure. So this is what we have it. And the pressure actually will can be given as an algebraic equation in terms of velocity only. And we can get this operator di directly by solving this optimization problem and least square problem and we will get uh, directly operators of the reduced order models. So, and Let's look at how this works in an, uh, an experiment. So we have a cylindrical wake example, and which is and for this, which actually uh, the flow is controlled and this boundary here, and we we observe the flow in the in the domain here, and we have collected 513 snapshots in the time interval from zero to two two seconds, and we learn reduce order models of order 30 from these snapshots. So we look up the pressure field which is actually in the average pressure in this domain in some point in the i've not marked here but this is a domain here in this domain we look at the average pressure obtained from the full order models and the operator inference and we we see that in our training data sets from the up to like we split the training into up to here so we take these all the points in the, our trainings and we compute a reduced order models in using the operator inference and we see that is both models captures the pressure fields in the given domain very well, but is kind of deteriorates outside the domain of the training data sets, but it still is a, can uh, can very well approximate uh, the pressure field as well outside the training set as well. And if you look up the field, so here the velocity field as well, and we, if we compare the error between the full order models and the reduced order models and the velocity field, we also see the error almost like uh, less than 1% or less than 1% here, the error of in between the reduced order models and directly obtained from the operator inference and the full order models. Okay, so here we have shown so far that how we can tell our operator inference for incompressible flow and we can make use of the knowledge of the algebraic equations in our learning process. And we can get a like very efficient uh, reduced order models for incompressible flows directly from the data set. So here I will jump a little bit uh, how we can really combine operator inference with deep learning. And this is our some of our preliminary work in these directions and how we can make use of these two worlds as well. So what we know in operator inference is that we need to know uh, the full knowledge at partial differential equations and so that we can make use of this information in learning. However, there are many scenarios where we do not have the full knowledge of all um, um, the full knowledge of partial differential equation or partial differential question which we know which way which may not characterize the whole dynamics of the process so then what we can do is split the the dynamics into two times two terms so f of v and r of v and f of v the term which can be think which we already know about the process so which we will know from the physical laws or by experts for example in the reactor models we typically happen to see this Arrhenius kind of terms, for example, or if you are working with incompressible flow, then you know there's a compressibility condition and this kind of knowledge you know about, about the process. And there is a, some more terms, which is R of V, which I like all these terms, and which is a kind of hidden dynamics or unknown terms in the dynamics. 
And one of the typical examples which we can think of is a friction term in the robotic arm. And the, there is a no concrete way how we can really model the friction terms in the robotic arm. So, but we still know how the robotic arm comes. And the, for example, there is a classical mechanical systems, but this mechanical system may not really describe the whole dynamics of the robotic arm. So then we can split into two parts. So into this one. Moreover, if you look from the simulation software side, then as we, as we discussed before, that we can collect the data from a software, and and we can build the reduced order models directly, having access to a discretized model. But we need a full knowledge of partial differential equations or underlying partial differential equations, which will describe or where the data come from. However, in these softwares, they are all sorts. If you as complicated uh, process, then there are, of course, there are small tweaks and error correction terms, which we actually are not aware of these things and or is not possible to put in the discretized model. And then there then there is a, some kind of a mismatch between the partial differential equation and the data which you collect from the simulated software. And Therefore, it can also fit into this category. So you have the some good knowledge of partial differential equation, but still there is some correction term which you are not aware of it. So how we can get a reduced order models or models directly from uh, from which or we can build a model which will describe the full dynamics where we only know the partial knowledge of the systems. For simplicity, uh, I assume this f of v to be a quadratic form. And uh, why we make this simplification, and there are some supporting arguments here, which I will put across. And these are the some, some arguments which are, are as follows. So first is that most of the dynamics, or the many dynamics which we see or governing equation, which are quadratic in nature. And uh, typical example, for example, in Neves stocks, you will also see in the Fisher's equation, which ex, uh, describe the dynamics of a gene and which are also quadratic in the nature. Moreover, what is also possible is that we can do hand engineered variables. We can define the hand engineered variables in which dynamics are quadratics. And this is a philosophy of lift and learn. So if you have, if you, if the dynamics is given by a more complicated nonlinear systems, then it is possible to make a hand engineered variables, and on those variables, dynamics will which dynamics will evolve quadratically. And uh, so, people who are not really familiar with the lift and learn approach, I have some one example. For example, you consider a nonlinear system which is in this form. So you have x dot is equals to minus x plus e of x, and e of x is kind of a nonlinear term, and so how we can write in the quadratic form is by by lifting. So you what we do is introduce a variable g, and e, which is e to the power of minus x. And if you take the derivative of it, then you have this form. And if you do the simple algebra of it, then you will get this g dot is equals to it's a g times of minus x plus g, which is also a quadratic. So and then if you write into lift, so not, Initially, you have only one variable x, and but now you have the two variables. But the beauty of this this form is that the dynamics is now the in the quadratic form. So as I said, it they, they are also possible to make hand engineered variables, and in those those variables, quadratic the dynamics will evolve quadratically. And therefore, we we by some kind of a simplification or without loss of generality, in fact, in some cases, we assume this quadratic form. And so now once we have this quadratic form, so still we have this R of V and R of V, one of the thing is like uh, you can interpret this R of V as a residual, which you cannot resolve by either by the quadratic form or the prior knowledge, and which are come somehow um, derives the hidden dynamics in the process. So what we do is we can make use of the residual networks and the residual networks has this following architecture. So this is uh, the residual networks is kind of also as, you, as the name suggests is a residual and is only learn the residuals in the networks. So if you and the residual is a kind of learned by the, the by the network and and uh, this is kind of enforced by the speed connections. 
and it has shown a lot of powers in the computer regions. Moreover, it has the regular network has a very nice connection with the dynamical system, how we integrate dynamical system, for example, explicit Euler requests, Euler schemes or Ramakuta kind of schemes. And it this all uh, integrating schemes has strong connection with the residual networks. And we want to use these things in learning dynamical processes. And moreover, you can think of residual connections as an adaptively refinement of your solution or the features. So if you have, uh, as the network goes deeper and due to the skip connection, what you are doing is you are matching this function close and close to the, the, the velocity field or the derivative of the velocity fields. And therefore, you can actually add the residual blocks to refine your solution space again and again without restarting the optimization process, which I will see show you in the next slides. So, inspiring by these all uh, facts, we propose a the linear quadratic residual network. So he, here, the one term is a linear term, one is a quadratic term, and then we have the residual terms which learns the residual of uh, residual dynamics in the process. So as I said, it there are a lot of uh, advantages of the residual networks, and the one of the thing is which particularly is very interesting is the um, is a loss landscape, and typically. Uh, neural networks are high dimensional optimization problems. However, due to the skip connection, which we have seen in the residual networks, the loss landscape becomes much more smoother and the training also becomes much more smoother here. And again, the layers, as, as I described in the previous slide, that the layers can be seen as a refinement of your solution. So we can add the layers uh, in the course of optimization process without restarting the whole optimization process from the scratch. So this this why this kind of connections can be used in, into learning dynamical process in a very adaptive way, adaptive way. So here we have tested this this uh, approach to two um, biological examples. They are not large scale system, but it still exhibit um, the, the the characteristic of learning dynamical processes. So here we have the two uh, mm, the first example which come from the uh, from the neurology, which describes the, the the neural dynamics in the more simplistic way. So what we, we do is we take 10 uh, time series from the different initial conditions, and we build the networks and the residual linear quadratic residual networks. And we check the, the, cap, the predictive capability of the models under the new condition from the or from the unseen data sets. And we have observed that these, um, these models, which we get it, they are much more robust as compared to if you do the fully connected uh, neural network. And this residual or linear quadratic residual ne networks tend to perform much better. And also the training also becomes much more smoother, even with the less number of data sets. And the other example is, is again from the biochemistry which actually uh, determines the dynamics of the the yeast glycolysis and which actually involves seven species and for this one also we have taken the 30 different initial conditions and to test uh, the models the learned models under the unseen data sets and we also observed that uh, that um, the linear quadratic residual networks tend to perform much better and also has a very good um, compromise between the ground truth and the learned dynamics. And here we do not have the full knowledge about the process, but we learn the whole, the residuals from the residual networks here. And this this brings to, uh, this brings me to end of the, my talk. So what we have seen is uh, in this talk, the learning reduce our models for non linear system directly from the data in the operator inference framework without having access to discretized models. And, but this is leveraged by the fact that, uh, that knowledge of partial differential equations in non. We have also tailored the operator inference framework for incompressible Navier-Stokes equations. And in the towards the end, we have seen a linear quadratic residual kind of network, which allows us to learn the hidden dynamics, which we may not fully know. And this is kind of inspiration between the lift and learn and also 
from the residual networks. And there are a lot of ongoing work. And uh, the one of the things which we are looking into is a non-uniform time series. So far in the operator inference, we assume that the data is given at the uniform sample time, but uh, uh, but is not the case all the time. For example, in biology, you will not get the data at the regular time interval, and it can be irregular or non-uniform time interval. So to to tailor this kind of approach also for non-uniform time series, we have not discussed um, the noise in the data set. So of course, if you get it from simulation, then of course there's no noise. But if you want to also refine your solution or the models using experimental data, and then experimental data will have some some noise, and therefore we have to make use of uh, uh, like proper tools for for the noisy case. Missing and corrupted data sets. We are, again, it is very common if you're working with an experimental setup, and we are also uh, doing some real world uh, uh, application of this approach to learn processes in the chemical engineering. And we are strongly collaborating with other departments at our institutes for this one. And with this, I would like to thank you for attention. And there are some references which are presented in this work. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Goyal, for the yes. great talk. I really enjoyed it um, uh, personally. I, I, I think the same thing. Uh, it's the same thing for uh, other audiences. We do have some questions in chat room. <clears throat> Let's start from the boxing question. But the boxing, um, the question is answered by Peter already. But if if not, please uh, unmute yourself or ask the question again. Boxing, if you are still here. Yeah, I, I see you are there. Can can you hear me? Yeah. Hi. It, hi. It answers. In, I, I, I don't know. I, th I, I wonder if it's true, the number of differential equations of the model. Okay, uh -huh. so Boxing's original question was, how is the order of reduced order mod reduced model defined? Okay, so um, it is, as Peter also said, it's number of differential equation of the models. This is also defined, and so how, how many um, how many differential equation you need to um, or you can also see the the dimension of the state vector so the for example the here is the x and if the x lies in the n dimensional then generally we have like n differential equation and if it's in the reduced space and which is uh, the, the, if the x hat is lies in the n-dimensional or r-dimensional, then this is also actually the number of differential equations which you have it. So this is how we can say the order of the system. Uh, OK, so, thank you. Yeah. OK, sounds good. OK, let's move on to the next question. Next question is uh, uh, from Xiao. And he asked, if we don't have any knowledge um, on PDE, even partial partial knowledge, can we use neural net to learn the reduced order model? Or if our prior knowledge of high fidelity PDE is wrong, can the neural net correct the prior knowledge by learning process through some study, for example, some correction terms? Yes, um, this is actually the in the last part of the talk. And of course, this kind of networks uh, allows you to learn the residual. And if there is, you don't know correctly the partial differential equation, then it can be corrected by the residual network. And in the both example, what I showed in the last two uh, from the biochemistry, and we do not have full knowledge or any knowledge about the partial differential equation, and we learn directly from the network. Yeah. And, and do you get the data from experiments? Where, where do you get the data? You no, know? here we have simulated data sets here. We do not have the real experimental data at the moment. Simulated data, okay. Yeah. Okay, next question is from- Thank you. Ter You're welcome. Okay. Next question is coming from Terrain. Um, very nice talk, Pawan. Uh, what types of Reynolds number did you use in your numerical test? How would you, the operator inference framework, in an under-resolved tabular regime. 
Yeah, um, in our this example, we have Reynolds number 100. Uh, I, I must say that we have not tested uh, our operator inference so far for turbulent regimes or turbulence. Or, so this is like we are uh, still looking into in turbulence and see how far we can go with it. But yeah, no, so I would say that we have not tested in the extreme cases so far. Yeah, I guess I'm sure you will get there soon. Um, <laughs> Fabulous region. Okay, the Thank next you. question. Okay, next next question is coming from Long Chen. Uh, thanks for the very nice talk. In my experience, we use regularization regularization when the optimization problem is ill posed, where we need to make additional assumptions for the solution. You you mentioned that you do regularization uh, because your optimization problem is ill conditioned. Can you give some model detail on that, the regularization? So we we have tested two kind of regularizers. So one is techno regularizers. So we just regularize with the norm of the solution. Mm -hmm. And one more, which we also do is on the SVD based regularizer, which is typically done in the dynamic mode decomposition as well. So you, for example, let me go to optimization problem. Okay, let's say here. So here, for example, you have this D matrix, which might be ill conditioned. So what we do is we take the SVD of this matrix and truncate the smaller single values of it. This is also one way of regularizing. So, but yeah, there can be a various many more, but we have tested these two of two kinds of regularizers. And it works both these regularizers works almost equally good in, in our experience. Mm. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, next question is coming from uh, Brenda Ng. Thanks for the talk, Pawan. Given your proposed architecture assumes the decomposition into H quadratic term, A linear term, and R residual term, did you confirm whether the quadratic linear residual effects are being captured by the constituent residual meaning is the structure actually interpretable or the effects are not captured the way that you were expecting thanks okay uh, to answer this 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 question is very nice question um we um we have tested these things so if the dynamics are uh, governed exactly by linear and quadratic term um, then actually you will see the interpretability there. However, if if the dynamics are not uh, governed by linear quadratic term and there's a residual term, and the residual terms is a kind of hidden and you don't know what kind of residual it has, it, then the interpretability becomes a little bit harder. But however, you can still see the dependency on the linear and quadratic term, how strong it is. So if it is strong, then you have very little uh, like, or they, they, they is a small residual which you need to learn and the network will be small. And then you see there is a dynamics is heavily depend on linear and quadratic term. So in that sense, it's more interpretable. But if, if there is a weak dependency on linear and quadratic term and the residual dominance, then it becomes hard, the interpretability becomes harder. Okay, Brenda uh, said right? you can actually use this for effect discovery in a sense, if so, very nice. Hmm. Right? Yes, 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 basically. Awesome. So you can see the, the, the how the dynamics goes and also to learn also to see the effect of these terms. And I mean, of course, it's a kind of an iterative processor. So it's not like you, you make a network and then you, you will have the, all the interpretability. So you have to go in iterative way and learn it. So if you want to get more interpretability there as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question is coming from David Chambers. Uh, he asked, what is the relationship between ROM accuracy and number of snapshots in the training set? Would you have difficulty if the system has a high degree of intermittency? Okay, uh, I'm, I'm sure if I understood the last part of the question correctly, but um, the accuracy of reduce of the models and snapshots. I mean, the, I mean, there is a, I think I would say, I would really say that uh, the quality of training set really depends. 
So the accuracy of reduce order system depends on the quality of uh, training data sets. So and the, the dynamics you want to capture. So and if the training data set does not uh, describe the dynamics, the overall dynamics very well, then the reduce order, order model will also will not generalize to all the scenarios in our experience. OK, and uh, so I mean, can you? OK, intermittency means that there can be short intervals with large variability combined with long periods of relatively low variability. OK. Uh, I think <laughs> nice question, but I, I must say that we have not tested this, this all the variabilities that if you go, if you take more data set with the uh, with the longer periods and low variabilities, so we have not tested. So I, I, it's a little bit hard for me to say anything concrete in this direction. Okay, awesome. But, yeah. Okay, um, I mean, I, I have a follow-on question about the Dave. Um, you know, in traditional reduced order model, as you increase the basis size, um, in reproductive case, your accuracy of the ROM has to, you know, reach the full order model uh, accuracy, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, do you see that in this framework? You, you know, the in, in the operator inference framework. I'm, I'm very uh, curious about that. Um, up to some level. Uh, I wouldn't say that it go to machine precision, but uh, okay. it can go very low until the numerical issues hits you. <laughs> so, oh. but we can go up to like 10 to the power minus 10 order accuracy with respect to the original model. Okay. But afterwards when the, the regularizer or the ill condition becomes uh, dominant and solving this uh, optimization problems becomes trickier. If you, uh, if, if you take more and more basis, actually what you're doing is you are actually also increasing the condition number of the optimization problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there will be like a kind of uh, going right in off. the opposite direction. Yeah. Yes, yes, I, yeah. I got you. Okay. All right. Um, the next question is coming from Boxing again. Uh, if the residual is non-deterministic, how could your methodology be applied? I noticed that it is listed in the future work. Can you illustrate a little bit more? How would you tackle that? Uh, um, I mean, of course, I mean, if, if there's a, I mean, we don't consider like a stochastic as this is for, at the moment the thing. So we, we say that there is a noise in the measurements, but it's still the process is very much deterministic. And the noise is actually coming from the sensors or the measurement errors. So, but we do not look into the proper stochastic systems and get into the learning stochastic system of the networks. Mm, yeah, this would be, this is what I would say at, at the moment, and we are not looking into stochastic as but in the more into, uh, more into deterministic as as well at the moment. Okay, um, the next question is coming from Brenda. Are you familiar with the universal differential equations, generalization of neural ODEs by Chris, Rakhaukas, is this a pure neural network or you using edge joints part of the back propagation? Mm, are, are you familiar yes. with the neural OD? Yes, yes, I am familiar with it. Um, well, we are not using any more sophisticated things what they use in, <laughs> in the neural ODs. We are doing in the very classical networks there. We are not using the adjoint of the back propagation at the moment. No. Okay. Um, how? Okay. Next question is coming from Soprano. How do you estimate the dimension of the worms? So yeah. this is actually done on the looking at the k of single values, so which I plotted like the one of the examples. So here. You collect your data set and you look up the, you take the single value decomposition of your data set and look at the decay of single values and the order of reduced system, which is determine how much energy which you want to capture. 
So here, for example, we choose the 10, which is goes here and which already captures almost 99.99% of your energy or energy in, present in your training data sets. So this is how you can determine order of or the dimension of reduced order model by looking at the decay of singular values. Great. Um, my follow-on question on that would be, I mean, it's related to what uh, Terrain asked. If the Reynolds number is really high, then the solution becomes advection dominated. Uh, you will not have a Kolmogorov with a decaying fast enough. Then how would you deal with that? I mean, <laughs> uh, so, so far we, in our framework, we have assumed that the linear projections gives you sufficiently reduction in the state dimension. Yeah. But if you become uh, convection dominant problems, then linear projection does not work anymore. And we have to look into nonlinear projection. And this is some of the work, for example, Kevin Karbeck is doing. And we, we are looking into doing, for example, convolution neural best um, reduction, which are kind of, you can think of a nonlinear projection of the state. But we have not really looked into very strong diffusion equations, I would say. Very but nice. it's, as I said, like in the operator inference so far, we assume there is a sufficient, uh, uh, like the easy reduced order model sufficiently small by linear projects itself. Right, right. Yeah. Well, we have a recent work uh, extending Kevin Kalberg's work um, by achieving some speed up. I mean, Kevin's original work, you know, the was was not that fast, and we mm -hmm. extended his work to accomplish the actual speed up. So you might want to take a look at that. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. We we'll look up this. Link. Okay, um, I don't have any more questions in the chat room, um, but that doesn't mean you cannot ask questions. You can unmute yourself and um, ask question directly. Um, Okay, the Xiao um, asked another question. Can we use this re reduced order model for data assimilation or optimal control? If so, then we will define a cost function or some kind of quantities of interest. That means the reduced order model has much less output dimension to consider. Will it be easier to build ROM? Mm. Difficult. I. I, I wouldn't say that this would be easier to, to construct a reduce order models, but uh, however, you can still improve your the accuracy of quantity of interest a little bit by the post processing or a, by solving an additional optimization problem there. But uh, I, in my experience, I wouldn't say that uh, it will it will make the building reduce order models or um, cheaper or easier. Okay, thank you. Um, any other questions? We we are five minutes after the um, you know scheduled time, but yeah. Any other questions? Uh, Rob, I just ask: Is the neural? I think the residual case, what will your LQ residual net do if you are missing V or W? Mm -hmm. Could we go to... Yeah, how does it handle incomplete information? Um, we, at the moment, we don't say that we are having a missing, so we assume that the, the sequence is at the regular time interval. If it's a missing, then we at the moment not doing any kind of processing. So that's why I listed in the one of our online work. We are looking how if if there is any uh, missing data set in the sequence, then how we really make use of it still. Rest of the sequence. So at the moment we are we do not have a methodology which actually handles the missing V and U. Okay, I hope that answered uh, your question, Rob. Um, I, I think we uh, kind of have to end here. Um, well, if you have further 
more questions, please um, directly email, um, you know, Pawan. I, 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 I'm sure he doesn't mind. <laughs> yeah, sure, I'll be happy to receive some emails. <laughs> okay, awesome. Okay, so with that, let's thank our speaker, uh, Dr. Goyal, uh, for the great talk. Uh, thank you so much. You're welcome. A pleasure. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. And um, in for the next DDPS seminar, I, I think we do have a another seminar next week. So please uh, stay tuned. Um, otherwise, um, uh, at John, uh, um, let's call a day. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Kola. It was a great talk. Thank you. It was a pleasure to give talks. Okay. We look forward to hear from you more. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, and thank then you. have a and have a very nice day. I think it's very early morning still there, so you have a still complete day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you very much again, and then for hosting and inviting. No and problem. We look forward. Well, um, okay. Send me send me your slide. Uh, uh, sure, sure. I I'll send yeah. you those slides. Okay, sounds yeah. good. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye-bye.